Hello and welcome to this week's edition of It's Your Call. We'll have a look at some of the decisions from last weekend's first round of finals. Some big games, some big calls, and as he does every Tuesday afternoon, the umpire's manager joins me, Jeff Gooshin. Welcome, Goosh. G'day, Wayne. Uh, question off the top. Do the umpires, is there more pressure on the umpires to make decisions in finals by virtue of the fact that they are very important games? Yeah, it's certainly no pressure from the umpiring department or the AFL for them to pay more free kicks or make more decisions, but I think they certainly feel the pressure knowing that every decision um, is a pretty solid outcome. So uh, they are nervous around getting it right, uh, but that's probably not a bad thing either. It keeps mm. them on their toes. At AFL is the Twitter address, hashtag your call. Keep picking them out, and uh, we will pick two until the final week of the finals. That's leading into the grand final in a couple of weekends. So keep getting involved, and we'd love to have your contributions right throughout the course of the finals. Let's jump straight into it. There was a few throws on the weekend, and uh, most notably from this game, Goosh. Yeah, there was quite a few in this game, and... Um, you know, I think the thing I want to point out here is in tight finals when the ball's, you know, moving around pretty quickly, uh, players have to try and correctly dispose of the ball. In this case, Roberts Thompson, you know, had prior opportunity, then didn't correctly dispose. In these ones, we just saw Jetta just happy to pitch the ball out, just throw the ball out. Good on the umpire for having the, uh, the vision to see these because, you know, it's sleight of hand, uh, but we do want throws picked up where we possibly can. Another one coming up now, very similar. So do you think the players are instructed? Look, I don't think they are, but I think they're under such extreme pressure, the, the intensity goes up to the level where mm. you know, there's more pressure on them to get the ball out quickly and sometimes they'll take us on with a throw. All right, uh, from throwing to holding the ball, a number of these decisions that will get your explanation on. Yeah, look, we just showed this comparison. This was uh, early in the year, round 19, Hawthorne versus Geelong. Mitch Duncan, run down by Cyril Rioli, no pro opportunity, ball knocked out in tackle. On Friday night, we almost saw a replica where Roughhead takes the ball, goes to kick, knocked out in tackle. On both occasions, play on. So, early in the year, we said that was play on. So, you deem final. this to not have prior opportunities, only just taking a couple of steps? Correct. Uh, very similar to the Mitch Duncan one where he grabs it, he goes to kick, knocked out straight away. We're comfortable with that. This one here, a little bit different. He actually takes his opponent on. He, he shimmies one way, balks back the other just had the ball a little bit too long. So this is pro-opportunity based around the fact that the umpire deemed that when he shimmied, mm. he, he could have given the ball off in that situation, then he took his teammate on. This one here a little bit different again. Pavlich takes the ball, we see him just throw his arms out. Now in this case, he's made no attempt. He's had a little bit of time there, but he doesn't try to do anything. Ball not knocked out in tackle, just lets the ball go. So the obvious question would be, uh, the umpire's positioning, why was that missed? Or why is a decision like that not actually picked up? Because Pavlich is actually yeah. facing back into the field of play. Yeah, really good question. I think you, you hit it on the head. Positioning is the key thing there. So if he's in a good position, he would see that he didn't get a dinky handball. Mm. He would have seen that he just let his hands go like that. So positioning and being able to see is pivotal in those decisions. Just before we move on to our next set of decisions, I quickly want to go back and let's get some more clarification around the Jared Roughhead decision and also the Round 19 one involving Mitch Duncan. As umpires, you're mm. instructing your umpires to allow players sufficient time to dispose of a ball. Yeah. Hence the reason why those two decisions, both yeah. identical, weren't paid as dropping the ball. Yeah. Prior opportunity. Yeah. Is that right? Simply because there was no prior opportunity and they've complied with the law in that when they've received it, they've tried to kick virtually straight away. Had they taken another three or four steps, that's different. But in these cases, they tried to kick straight away, takes it, balances to kick, knocked out, play on and uh, really good calls because we want to protect the ball player when there's 150 tackles a game if we were paying these all the way through we'd be paying 100 holding the ball yep. free kicks a game that's tough all right another uh, decision that has dominated this year and uh, certainly got a lot of attention about a particular game in wa it's deliberate out of bounds yes this is deliberate out of bounds and again you know the, the point we want to make is we want players to try and keep the ball in play rather than uh, hitting the ball out. Now, in that case, he had a teammate inside that he might have been able to knock the ball, was worried, put the ball towards the line, got the ball out of bounds. So, look, they look harsh, but we want to be strong with this. Reckon this one is harsh? Yes, look, it's, it's probably, you know, on the, on the low end of the scale in terms of deliberate, but, again, took the ball on his left leg, kicked it hard and long towards the boundary. He, he's under legitimate pressure there, and, and, and the shape of the ball could have meant that it's gone the way it did, yep. or it could have tracked back inboard. Yes. It's still a harsh call, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, take your point on that. He, he left footer, he could have curled the ball inside, and, again, it's, 
It's we want the players to keep the ball in play rather than out. Now, that one there, just want to clarify, from a marking contest, however, they are permitted to punch the ball away from their teammate. This time it goes out of bounds. So if he was all on his own, that would be different. This one here, another legitimate deliberate out of bounds. Reed, yes, he's under pressure, but what does he do when you see the front on? What's his intent? What does he try and do? He tries to shovel, scoop the ball straight out of bounds. So we're comfortable with that one as well. Sunday. Over at Subiaco. Something with that ground, Jeff. <laughs> uh, Kangaroos player has the ball, just kicks it wide and long. And yes, it took a quirky little bounce again. But again, the AFL saying, what's his intent? We want the players to try and keep the ball in play rather than out of play. This one here, again, player running towards the boundary line, under a little bit of pressure, taps it towards the line, tries to say to the umpire, look, I didn't mean this, but the bottom line is his intent was to get the ball out of bounds, and we're comfortable with that one as well. Lindsay Thomas, this one here, under a bit of pressure, definitely under pressure, but handball's over his head towards the line, no teammate in the vicinity, didn't pay it, and one that we should have paid based around uh, he put the ball out of bounds with some intent. Yeah, got away with one there, Lindsay. The final one or series of decisions we'll have a look at are 50 metre penalties. Yes, and again, this is an area of the game we, we want to be strong with. We can see five here. It's a free kick to Geelong. We can see five take the ball, and if we watch the replay of it, we'll see him not prepared to give the ball back straight away. We've said to the clubs, you need to give it back straight away. Fife elects to run the ball back, which delays play, allowing all his teammates to run through, fill holes. Geelong should be able to move that ball on quickly. Fife delayed the play. I think what's been really good this year, Geesh, is in a number of these incidents, we've actually heard the umpires issuing the instructions before making that final decision to award a 50-metre penalty. Yeah, correct. And the umpire will try and help out where he can. In this one here, we can just see Kennedy's just pushed over. He was always going to mark the ball. Douglas didn't attempt to mark or spoil, just pushed him over and caused a delay. This one here, cribbing. Uh, Cracker takes the mark. His opponent just follows him, follows him, follows him. Um, knows that he should pull up, should pull up now. Keeps going with him. Doesn't allow Cracker to move the ball on quickly, so another delay. Do you find that the games start to settle down if you are really strong with regards to implementing some of these decisions early in a game? Yeah, I mean, this one here was a good one. We can see Maxwell crib into the protected area and he's far too close to Hodge, but spot on, Wayne. If, if we're strong early in games, the players get a feel for how the umpire is going to adjudicate. So if we miss some early or are lenient early, the players will take advantage of that and all of a sudden we have a hybrid uh, interpretation. So we must be strong early. Now, this one wasn't paid and should have been paid. It was similar to the other one where he's in a protected area. He's not obliged to be there. So has he gone over 50. the mark or is he in the protected zone? A bit of both. He's cribbed the mark and he's also cut the corner. So he, he's clearly been in the protected area. This one here to Franklin. Mark the ball around the 50. Chris Tarrant happy to just keep coming. This not paid. So a bit of a mixed bag. Some of these we should have paid, like the ones we did pay, but we've got to be strong and consistent. All right. Then the question that I'll ask is Friday night, that opening 15 minutes is, uh, between Hawthorne and Collingwood was as brutal as anything. And I actually think the umpires umpired it exceptionally well because they just let the players play. Yet we're sitting here before and we're saying if the umpires adjudicate strongly and firmly early on, it tends to allow the game to evolve naturally. Correct. That's somewhat of a contradiction, though, isn't it? Not really, because if we're strong early, that sets the pattern, and then the players won't put it out of bounds. They won't crib the mark. So if we're strong early, we set the tone, players know what they can and can't do, and we probably get a better result. But there's a really fine line between under-intervening and over-intervening. Friday night was a classic. We had to find a high free kick or a, a, a strong hold to pay a free kick early. The umpires didn't see that, mm. so that's why it looked a little bit untidy, but we can't just pluck them out. All right, let's have a look at the umpires for the second week of the finals. You've culled a few, and uh, these are the lucky people. Yes, yeah, so I'll just involved. go through the field umpires. Um, we can see all the umpires' names there, but uh, yeah, Adelaide and Fremantle, Matthew Nichols, um, Simon Meredith, Shane McInerney, they had the game on Friday night at the MCG Collingwood Hawthorne. Did a good job, so we've kept that crew together. And the next one, um, Collingwood versus West Coast, uh, Brett Rosebury, Justin Schmidt, Matt Stevick, all had very good games last week, so they'll continue through this week as well. No Jordan Bannister, but he did up for his first final last weekend. Uh, I think you gave him a 7 out of 10, but it's been a remarkable year for him. Yeah, it's been a terrific year for him. We, uh, we're delighted with his progress, and he's a bit of a bonus for us. But, uh, you know, it's high standards. Um, he performed well on the weekend, but other guys performed a bit better. So, unfortunately for Jordan, he's finishing up now. Can't believe the tank's not umpiring Peter 
Stasi, appreciate you coming in. Look forward to having you back next week. Thanks, Wayne. And uh, you can get involved at AFL, hashtag your call. Pick out a decision, send them through, and we'll be back this time next week to review some more decisions. For your chance to win two packages to the Toyota AFL Grand Final, log on to quitnow.gov.au and in 25 words or less, give us your best motivational speech, encouraging a friend or family member to quit smoking. Have a great week. See you next week.